Aloha and welcome. My name is Taylor Norris and I'm a certified galactic astrology soul reader and Reiki master teacher. In today's video, I will be sharing with you and together we will be flying into the energy of the upcoming Leo full moon, January 25th, 2024 one of the themes coming through this beautiful leo full moon is flying for the pure joy and thrill of it thank you so much for being here with me today and flying together before we dive into the astrological energies, I would like to let you know about this amazing class I am co-creating and hostessing. It's an empowering class called Illuminating Pluto in Aquarius. So this is the class for you if you are feeling called to explore and invite in the higher frequencies of this Pluto in Aquarius transit that is kicking off once again on January 20th, 2024, and will be with us as a powerful energetic through 2044. So this class is unique in that it combines galactic astrology as well as Reiki, a shamanic style journey using Reiki energy combining the insights and clarity of exploring the astrological and galactic energies in depth, learning what there is to know with our knowledge and our wisdom and our minds, receiving the divine guidance through astrology, and also accessing the infinite healing and empowerment of Reiki, receiving your divine guidance for this transit, accessing that inner guidance that each of us has within, and doing all of this within the space of a sacred circle. So if you'd like to learn more, definitely check it out, taylornorrisreiki.com. In the events tab, you will see the information about the class and how to register. I also made another video talking about why I feel called. I've literally been called and compelled to share this class and do this work and really invite in and embrace the higher frequencies of this transit because it really does contain infinite possibilities. So join me in empowering the infinite possibilities here. The infinite possibilities of your soul and your spirit in this incredible time on earth that we are living in. All right. So in this video, what we will be doing is exploring these key dates leading up to the full moon on January 25th. So I'm going to go over this table right here. We'll look at the chart, the astrological chart of the full moon, the aspects it's making, and the overall themes and messages about that. And we'll also explore the Sabian symbols of the sun and moon, as well as the galactic chart for this full moon, which has a very unique galactic alignment I'm excited to explore with you. And you'll want to make sure you stay until the end because I'll be sharing with you a galactic heritage card pool that wanted to come forth to give us our highest guidance for this full moon for all who are watching this video and listening and receiving this information. So without further ado, key dates to be aware of. January 12th and 13th, we are enjoying a Mars trine Jupiter. This is great for getting a lot done. This can be a bit overwhelming in terms of how much there is to get done, but Mars and Capricorn is very organized and practical as well as the Jupiter in Taurus. So this is a wonderfully productive time. On January 13th, Mercury enters Capricorn. So we get another influx of this Capricornian energy, which is grounded and practical and organized and efficient and really minded 
of the material world, mindful of this material world. So the practicalities, the technicalities, you know, really thinking about the details and the manifestations and the creations and how do we make this work? What is the system that needs to to be in place? What are the next steps? What are the communications that need to take place in order for a project to get done and be completed in integrity. Then on January 15th, we have the sun sextile Neptune and the north node of the moon trine Venus. These are very highly spiritual energies. This is a wonderful time for healing, for meditation, for creativity, for listening with your whole body, senses activated and opening for that higher guidance for your next steps on your soul growth and soul evolutionary experience in this lifetime and for making some spiritual action steps as well and feeling that that support of your spirit within the space of your body and your energy field and this could come in the form of you know your relationships and helpful and healing women the people in your life that make you feel good so this is a wonderfully creative day We still have the sun sextile Neptune with us on January 16th and January 17th, we have Mercury sextile Saturn. So this is a, this is a different energy. This is more the real world and the, the practicalities of Mercury in Capricorn and Saturn. That's all about making it happen. But Saturn is in the sign of Pisces. So this could be talking about the dreams, the long-term plans, the long-term projects, the long-term manifestation and co-creation of the dreams and the systems and how it's going to work and what's new, (laughs) what's new and good and what's ultimately expansive too, because January 19th, we have Mercury trine Jupiter. This is very expansive ideas. And this can be a lot of communications, a lot of space within the mental body opened up, freed up, a lot of downloads, a lot of information coming in. And having it be in the realm of practicalities and physicalities and let's make it happen and let's make it real. On January 19th, we also have Venus square Neptune, which can be that divine inspiration frequency also coming in and meeting up with those creative manifestations and intentions and co-creations and new relationships being born here. And it really is. It's like follow your intuition also with the Venus square Neptune. Listen with your whole body, with your whole being for what is correct for you in your relationships, in your creations, in your manifestations, in your mental body as well. Lilith is trine Mars. So this can be a deeply motivating, powerful energy of the divine feminine and the divine masculine, compelling, again, that real world manifestation and action steps as both Lilith and Mars are in the earth signs. And this can be like a very passionate energy as well um, with Mars in combination with Lilith. So if passions are high, making time to self-soothe and take some breaths and ground and you know, do your practice working with the kundalini. I mean, this is like kundalini energy moving through the body and making things happen. So very dynamic energy. January 20th is the big day. We still have the Lilith trine Mars energy. So very passionate again, that kundalini rising. We're all feeling this, okay? 
you're like me and everybody I'm talking to, which I'm guessing if you are, if you're watching this, there's this sense of real like anticipation, invigoration, what's coming. Like we all know this big shift is coming. It's here. We're making the shifts. The energy's fast. And here we go on January 20th with the sun conjunct Pluto first in Capricorn, finishing up that Capricornian deconstruction process of the old systems and the old paradigms and the sun also being conjunct Pluto, Pluto following the sun as Pluto enters the sign of Aquarius on January 20th. So the sun lighting the way for Pluto. And again, if you really want to investigate, and I mean deep dive <laughs> into the Pluto and Aquarius energies, both through the astrological lens, the galactic lens, and also through a very embodied Reiki journey, shamanic experience as well, listening for your own inner guidance, definitely check out my class, Illuminating Pluto and Aquarius. I'd love to have you there in the sacred circle, and it will be recorded also if you have other plans on January 20th you will receive the recordings of the class also because I realized the time can't work for everybody, but I was guided to hold the class when the transit would be exact. January 21st, we're still in that sun conjunct Pluto energies, and I am seeing this as the unification and the birth of the authentic self, the soul, the soul consciousness really being very present, very embodied very real, very tangible, very accessible here for each of us. And still on January 21st, we've got Lilith trying Mars. So again, the Kundalini energies, the life force energies are high. I would advise have your sleepy time tea in the cabinet, in the pantry. <laughs> I know I've got a few bags of it left. In case the energy is so much that you can't sleep and you might need some relaxation, right? Some chamomile tea, that kind of thing. Or you might feel really exhausted too with these energies. I know it can kind of go all the different ways. So be very kind to your energy body. This is going to be this is going to be a very empowering week, a very activating week is what I am sensing and feeling. Be very soothing and present to your nervous system and what your human body needs also at all times as well as you're expanding so much your consciousness and making all of these shifts and working with these powerful energies. January 22nd, Venus enters Capricorn, and that's when our creativity, our relationships, our divine feminine functionality becomes more practical, becomes more grounded. Venus has been very expansive in Sagittarius, and now it's like, okay, how do we make the creations happen? You know, this is such a creative energy, and we're all building up to this Leo full moon. So again, this creative practicality energy, let's take the steps, what's the plan in seeing, seeing those manifestations and those co-creations more and more physical and obvious and connecting. On January 23rd, Lilith, our dark cosmic feminine is trying Mercury. So this can be this I'm feeling this like a, a mental recalibration, reorganization, reorientation to the insights and revelations of the divine feminine and of any kind of shadow material that needs reckoning, that needs consideration, any kind of disempowerment frequencies that are there. Being aware of those in your mind, I know I was in a journey just yesterday for myself and becoming aware of a specific wound that was being healed. And I knew about like what it was, but I was like, what's the specific of it? I knew its physical manifestation, the pain it was giving me in my body. Uh, and I also knew what it was connected to in terms of thematics, but I was like, what is the mental component there? And that revelation just kind of popped in. 
And it was about this mental loop of what did I do wrong? And I could see how that bubble force field was also a part of a larger thought form having to do with the victim and the martyr kind of consciousness and how this was being healed and released. So this could be something similar with Lilith trying Mercury wanting to clear that thought form and that imprint. I tend to have things happen early. <laughs> so this might be a bit about what this transit might reveal for you. January 24th, Jupiter sextile Saturn. Again, this is wonderfully expansive, productive, yet focused with Saturn. Jupiter is very expansive. Saturn is contracting. So this can be step by step, those manifestations, that expansion, the practicalities of the expansion accommodating our expanded consciousness, accommodating our expanded reality that we're co-creating here. Lilith still in that trine with Mercury. And then we also have Chiron square Mars. So again, beautiful opportunity for healing, healing the masculine energy, the wounded masculine Mars is the ruler of the Chiron in Aries. So working very deeply and compassionately with the masculine energy in a way that is ultimately healing and empowering and helps uplift the divine masculine energy in each of us. But this can be a compulsion to do some healing around this with the square, feeling a tension, feeling a motivation that some kind of shift needs to happen. You might observe that shift happening within yourself or within other Mars, you know, Mars projected outward men in your life too, or masculine figures in your life. January 25th, we're in the full moon. It's happening in Hawaii in the morning time. So definitely adjust to your time zone. It's happening, I think, seven in the morning here in Hawaii. And we have a lot of wonderful aspects. So Jupiter is still in that sextile to Saturn, getting things done. The expansion and the loftiness, the flyingness of that Jupiter energy um, can actually be grounded and practical and really manifest and take root and take hold and take form. Chiron's still in that square to Mars. So we are really being asked to work with the healing, the divine masculine energies here. What does the healed divine masculine look like? That would be a beautiful reflection at this time, one that's not overdoing it or over dominating, controlling, etc. And also that's not just completely demonized and not given any space at all. What is that healthy masculine balance in between? This full moon is happening at five degrees, 14 minutes of Leo. We can look now at the chart here for the Leo full moon. And I invite you to reflect back upon your intentions. What were you seeding? What were you up to on the Leo new moon back on July 28th, 2022? So not last year, but the year before we had a new moon at five degrees of Leo new moon, the energy of new beginnings, seed planting, an intention seeded, full moon, more the energy of the fruition, the manifestation, the culmination, darker the moon time at the new moon, you can't see it yet, you're just trusting, you're having faith, full moon, you're actually seeing it, you're seeing the moon in its full glory, in its full light, what were you doing and thinking about and dreaming about then, plug that on through to what is the reality now? What have you created? What have you manifested? There's a chance that something has been created and something has been manifested there for you because it's Leo. It's a very creative sign. It wants to self-express. Maybe this is something in terms of your own self-expression. You can look back and think back to who you were and how you were self-expressing back July 28th, 2022. And then fast forward to now. 
are you more authentically self-expressed now than you were then? My guess is yes, you are massively more fully and authentically self-expressed now and going forward. How can you even express more authentically? Like what is your next level of that to be dreaming into? Looking at this full moon, also we see that Pluto and the sun are still conjunct. It's a five degree orb now, but we are still very much fresh off that energy of Pluto moving into Aquarius, the sun moving into Aquarius, and that authentic self infusion and compression and embodiment activation within the context of the group too, Aquarius the collective. This is a deeply transformative full moon. This is like a reckoning of your soul <laughs> and your spirit and the embodiment. And it's also square to Jupiter. And this is where I'm feeling that it's a big expansive adjustment of what we think we are worthy of receiving here with this Venus and Capricorn quinconx the moon in Leo and this big expansive adjustment of what we believe is possible with Saturn quinconx moon as well. Quinconx is an aspect of adjustment. So Jupiter being that big and expansive, how are we limiting ourselves in terms of our worth, Venus, our relationships, our creativity, our ability to experience joy and have that really work out for us on the earthly plane. And Saturn and Pisces, what we believe is actually possible. Saturn can be our sense of constriction and contraction and no, it can't really be there in the material world. And Jupiter squared this full moon in Leo saying, well, actually it can be, you know, you can fly, you can spread your wings. What were those dreams? Dream a little dream here. Moon in Leo, trine Neptune in Pisces dream a little dream, connect with the dream time. What do you wish to create? What are your next steps in that co-creation? What has your soul created thus far in your spirit? And what are you being called and guided to create next? And allow yourself to be in the expansive possibilities of what is next, knowing that if and my guess is it will be in alignment with this new Aquarian paradigm, then there's nothing to worry about. It's going to come together. And the energies are really supporting the coming together of it this year and the next 20 years. So you're being called to be bold, to be brave, to step into your power, your inner authority, your unique self-expression here in Leo and express, express yourself, your truth, your being, your energy, your frequency is needed on this planet. This new consciousness that's being born on earth that understands that we're all connected, that we're all one, we're one with all the humans and the animals and the plants and everything is conscious. And we're one with the galactic and the sun and the stars and our star family and our non-physical guides and the angelic realms and the fairy realms and all the different realms. We're all in this together and supporting one another and just reaching up and blooming like the flower, receiving the light of the sun, being the cosmic conscious co-creators in earth bodies at this time and being asked to self-express and create our dreams and our passions and what is true to us. And if we don't already see it in the world, well, then bring it to the world. That's your invitation to empower it in the world. Heaven on earth is being birthed. The new earth is being birthed through each of us, through each of our bodies and our energy fields and our auras in our communications, in our actions, in our behaviors, in our facial expressions and smiles and how we interact with others 
and just your energy field like walking around as an awakening being on a spiritual path and that all of that matters and if you feel more aligned you know wearing your funky shoes you know wear your funky shoes express that leo <laughs> have fun have fun with yourself here it's okay to be an individual we need you to be your individual you as we come together within the sacred circle of community and the collective aquarius that's very very important to know yourself and explore yourself fully as you come in as a sovereign being connecting with the group consciousness with the community and the sacred circle because you have a unique piece of the puzzle that each of us really need to make the greater whole to make the great perfection of the great whole of the cosmic consciousness network of divine intelligence source creation all that is so what's your unique part what's your unique feeling what does your inner child need at this time too that could be a good listening of what is the guidance coming through your inner child in what way can you more fully honor the supreme intelligence and genius of your inner child because that inner child within you is a creative genius just so you know the moon and leo knows this <laughs> All right, so the Sabian symbol for the moon is Leo 6, so you round up. A conservative, old-fashioned lady is confronted by a hippie girl. The need to transcend our subservience to fashion in morals as well as in clothes. And the signature is the relativity of social values. This particular interpretation comes from mindfire.ca. It's a wonderful rabbit hole. You can look at every single planet or point in your chart, what degree it's at, what the Sabian symbol is. I highly recommend doing that if you are a student of astrology. The image here I was guided to co-create with the help of AI <laughs> is this orb in the mirror and that was really coming through this confrontation of the old paradigm the old-fashioned lady and the hippie girl the new paradigm the progressive paradigm the flower child right the one that is resonating with that new consciousness and knows that everything is connected and let's all get along and this is very threatening to the conservative old lady here right these old paradigms and no it's top down it's hierarchical you know you're not supposed to wear that <laughs> you're not supposed to be that be that bold be that empowered be that fully self-expressed here Really, I'm seeing this as this feeling of get on with the times here, you know, expressing your authentic values. That's what's needed. And we're having with this long term Uranus in Taurus transit, a whole reorganization and reorientation of our values. So I think at the collective level, we are going to see more and more of that energy manifesting as you know relating to kind of the mainstream fashion the mainstream paradigm the mainstream values that's gonna just feel more and more empty I think and like distant and no longer relevant to more and more people and I think anything that's resonating with that vibration of the new consciousness is really going to have a gravitas and a a pull to it a magnetism to it so we're all being shaken up in terms of our values and learning and exploring more of what's really unique to each of us the sabian symbol for the sun aquarius 6 is also very interesting a masked figure performs ritualistic acts in a mystery play the individual's involvement in long established patterns of activity aiming at the release of collective power and this symbol points to transpersonal 
responsibility. So looking at the rituals and the ceremonies of your life here and how that connects to your soul and spirit intentions for this lifetime and connects you to a deeper sense of mission. So there's the day-to-day -day responsibilities, right, of your human life and your roles and your practicalities. And then there's also that soul and spirit level. And looking at the soul and spirit as, you know, more and more collective as these different streams of frequency here. Transpersonal, it's like expanding beyond the personal and into the collective. This has a truly Aquarian feel to it. And I think it's a call to come together in these groups, in these sacred circles and work together, <laughs> creating this new consciousness, you know, groups that understand the illusion of physical reality and are tapped into the more multidimensional and quantum. And, it, you know, working with this energy too, I noticed myself feeling a little dizzy with that, understanding that as we do this, there is a reorientation process taking place to facilitate this shift. So it's really important to stay grounded, stay grounded in your authenticity, what's yours, what's not, and coming together in ways that feel really safe and held and sacred to you and supportive of your sovereignty and your individuality. Because you could see the shadow side of how this could be manipulated, right? And has been manipulated many, many times because humans were so empathic and caring and want everybody to be okay. And that can be kind of manipulated so that we think we need to be responsible for other people in ways that can be disempowering to other people and disempowering to ourselves. So this, again, we're already going to be feeling it so much with Pluto Sun and Pluto Aquarius, Sun Aquarius. What is the social responsibility, the personal responsibility, the transpersonal responsibility, being in the questions and the receiving of your truth around each of those and not being uh, illusioned by or delusioned by any kind of play or theatrics that might be coming to you, being able to use your third eye and that clear seeing, seeing through what is true for you. I'll also just add, this makes me think of the ritual of COVID that so many people had their different and their unique perspectives and experiences of. So being very aware and being clear of what larger collective rituals may or may not be taking place and how can you take your power back and be very grounded and what is the ritual you want to be a part of, right? <laughs> Consensus reality. I, I was reflecting on the fact that mainstream reality is called consensus reality. And in what ways do you, you maybe no longer consent to that reality? I know I'm like, I don't consent to consensus reality. <laughs> and this might be one of those instances where maybe you don't consent to consensus reality anymore either. This could be an interesting exploration as we move into Pluto Aquarius. What parts of consensus reality do you or do you not consent to? And remember your power and your sovereignty as a individuals, as a human being, as a soul and spirit being. It's very important to remember. So very, very fascinatingly, we have the galactic chart here of the full moon from galacticastrochart.com where you can make a free chart for yourself for your birthday or for any date or transit you want to make one for. We see all the different galactic alignments 
we see that with the sun and the moon, the full moon itself, there were not any galactic alignments that came through in the calculator. However, there is a very talented certified quantum soul guidance practitioner named Joyce Van Nispen, who created this incredible PDF spreadsheet of all the different zodiac degrees for many different Messier objects and galaxies and nebulas and really cool stuff. And so I was guided since the sun and moon didn't have any alignments. Let me check out the spreadsheet and see what's there. Lo and behold, there is something there. There's something there for every degree of the zodiac. Okay. And it's not just something. It's like many things. If you want to look at like that. And it doesn't mean if there's something there that it's necessarily literally on the ecliptic plane too. So that's something to be aware of also. Okay, angelfish cluster is at 5 degrees and 21 minutes of Aquarius. So the sun in Aquarius is conjunct, very tight conjunction here. The angelfish cluster, which is... Again, I this is brand new information to me. Very, very exciting. It's in the direction of Sagitta constellation, which is the arrow here in this picture of Aquila, the eagle. I have not worked with this particular constellation. Not a lot has been written about this particular constellation or explored and definitely, it's not that this cluster here in this photo is in this constellation, but it's in that general direction here. And this is a Hubble Space Telescope photo of this cluster, which is just so beautiful here. It's a globular cluster a great ball of ancient stars on the edge of our galaxy around 13,000 light years from Earth. It's 27 light years across and just extraordinary. This full moon, we have the chance to reach far out, far out into the angelic realms, into the heavens, that flying energy. And then we also have that opportunity to go really deep within and under the sea and into the emotions and into the liquid light plasmic waters of cosmic consciousness the unconscious the collective unconscious the the field where all the information is contained and so i have a picture here of two different angel fish and how beautiful that this is, this is kind of like the animal totem, you could say, of this galaxy and and what this full moon is bringing through, is shining a light on is that angelic frequency, this underwater frequency, and this underwater and group consciousness frequency too, because the nodes of the moon are aligned with Cetus, the sea monster, okay? This is the great cosmic whale. And in some of my experiences with this constellation, it's been coming through in my readings a lot lately, no doubt, because we have the nodes of the moon activating souls with Cetus alignments to learn about the astrology that they're working with right now they're natal and also by transit so tal seti actually good chance has exoplanets has physical planets so this is definitely a opportunity here with this full moon the sun in aquarius pluto in aquarius now for open contact for galactic contact my caveat with that is always i'm asking for enlightened contact enlightened beings enlightened star beings that want to come through enlightened councils of beings such as the galactic council of light to come through here and I think we're even getting that directive with the angelfish here too. I've been even in the experience of, I'm not even sure the angel is its own category anymore. The enlightened galactic beings feel so much like angels to me. So 
that's just a thought putting that out there because what is human and what is galactic we humans are galactic beings i don't know i don't know what do y'all think it's a fun it's a fun question to explore so the nodes here with cetus this is really like shamanic journeying dream time reiki journeying accessing the depths of your soul and spirit guidance and really going within going deep going into the emotional body healing and clearing and receiving support if this is feeling like way too much because the cetus energy in my experience with people who have who have this very strong natally it can feel like a lot and this can feel like a lot of emotions and a lot of a lot going on in the dream time too and not always pleasant here so if you're needing support if you're needing some guidance definitely reach out for support support yourself and know that this could be a manifestation of the energy and it doesn't have to be unpleasant either so i think there's a really beautiful and powerful expression of the tau seti and cetus energy that we can access and it's it's connected to that divine intelligence it's connected to the open contact it's connected to going very, very deep within and understanding the true nature of the group consciousness and like how to do that. The whales know how to do that. <laughs> they really do. Celestial whales definitely know how to do that. We also have the Lyra energy strong here coming through Mercury and Mars that are conjunct together conjunct vega star i have a couple different videos about vega star on my channel so be sure and check those out if you want to dive into more of the vega star energy it's just beautiful frequency i love the vega frequency so much and this is like such ancient soul wisdom coming through the mind and then into the body as well and actually making that action practical to Mars, Mercury, communicating it with the two together here. This can be really passionate too. Um, so be mindful again, take a breath before you want to say something. Maybe take a moment if you're feeling angry or, or so much passion, just take a moment, an extra moment, and know that that pause can be really, really helpful. But this is beautiful energy for going within and connecting to our earliest humanoid galactic ancestors, the ancient Vegans, and even the future timelines of the Vegans too, which can take you places like this Sagitta <laughs> constellation, angelfish galaxy, like far beyond Milky Way galaxy. It's just incredible. Jupiter, remember square the full moon, conjunct Shadir star and Cassiopeia. This is the queen. This is the divine feminine energy. Also opposite Shapley attractor. So our divine feminine inner magnetism is extra activated. We're supported in our manifestations. We're supported in expanding our sense of our value, our self-worth, our self-esteem as light workers, as champions and forerunners and embodied vessels of the new consciousness. Saturn in Pisces conjunct Fomalhaut still this again the downloads y'all Archangel Gabriel aligned with Royal Star Fomalhaut bringing in the Christ consciousness bringing in that angelic frequency the angel fish cluster here the angels are available the enlightened galactic beings are available here remembering the codes and the keys of heaven on earth this denebadish star the shaman star and cygnus constellation where they went about co-creating a heaven on earth many of my my clients who have alignments with cygnus really are remembering what what happened there and how we can course correct in this lifetime to create heaven on earth now Hopefully you can still hear me well. My computer is dying, so I had to charge it. I can't have it charging and have my microphone at the same time. So here we go. Neptune, conjunct Markov star and Pegasus still. And this is bringing in our 
mental creativity. The celestial winged ones are definitely with us. The unicorns, the horses, the freedom, the freedom of that. The Celtic timelines and mysticism and relationship to the great goddess definitely with us streaming through this Neptune, streaming through, remember that trine, to the moon so feeling free like a horse running feeling free like a horse the winged horse flying and then we have pluto conjunct aladfar and more widely altair star in aquila and i'm really diving deeply into the galactic mysteries and energies of this in my class so join me if you can chiron in aries conjunct alpharat star and andromeda this is a very freedom-oriented Chiron that is seeking liberation for the divine masculine, breaking free of the patriarchal, distorted manifestations of the divine masculine energy and birthing something that is new and truly supportive structures that emanate and resonate the frequency of the new consciousness, the shift to the inner authority where we're coming together as sovereign individuals in the sacred circle of our community, of our soul family. We're remembering who we are and why we're here and how to empower the higher frequencies of freedom and heaven on earth, the new earth, the new paradigms that we are here to co-create. Because if you're here, you're here for a reason. You're on a mission. And thank you very much for being here. <laughs> you're needed. The final message I would like to share with you is the card from Lisa Royal Holtz Galactic Heritage card deck number 91, Dreamtime and Awakening. Cetacean whale parallel timeline. And this card is again echoing the notion, the idea of the whale in the waters, in the mystical waters, in the emotional waters, in the dream time, in the illusion time, right? Thinking of those mass figures in the rituals. What do you need to see clearly as illusion, as delusion, as falsity, as not true? Being able to see through the illusions of the physical and the material world with your discernment, with your clarity, and also using the dream time understanding that that is a time where you're in that expanded reality. A lot of good work and a lot of guidance can come through. So definitely my guidance would be in this next week or so leading up to the full moon, the full moon itself, to write down your dreams, remember your dreams, ask for higher guidance dreams. That is, if you're able to sleep at this time, this card is also connected to the Syrian energies, which if you remember, in our galactic chart, Mercury, Mars, conjunct, Lyra, Vega, also opposite Sirius A, Canis Major constellation. So there can be ancient mysteries and downloads and mystery teachings that are coming through your dream time. It may be soul experiences from a parallel timeline that you can access and more fully embody and see in your day-to-day -day life. This is also to me saying that reality is just getting trippier and trippier. <laughs> no, I'm not microdosing. I'm not on anything except Reiki energy and my very healthy high vibe raw vegan diet. Thank you very much. And this is, you know, inviting in that dreamy quality of reality, yet also being in your clarity, in your groundedness. And I think we're all really going to be navigating this together. We're in this collective dream time. And the more we can awaken within the dream of the actual, you're dreaming when you're asleep at night and awakening within the dream 
of the waking life as well. I think this is where this is where that sweet spot is. This is that Neptune trying the moon in Leo. This is also that north node of the moon conjunct Talcetti, Cetus constellation, the sea monster. And this is just coming through so dearly as we experience Pluto conjunct the sun, Pluto moving into Aquarius, soul consciousness really really coming up, really coming through and asking to be right here in our hearts, Leo Moon, fully embodied, fully self-expressed, fully realized. So my many blessings to you. Connect with me more, please. And thank you very much. TaylorNorrisReiki.com. We've got Illuminating Pluto and Aquarius class coming up January 20th. Would love to have you. Many different astrology readings I offer, including the Galactic Astrology Soul Readings, Reiki sessions one-on-one, -on -one, as well as Reiki certification classes, and a free new moon Reiki share every single month, guiding you home to heaven on earth within yourself with Reiki and astrology. Aho, amen, namaste, and so it is. Mahalo, happy and blessed Leo full moon to you, Pluto and Aquarius 2024 and beyond.